No, and I, I really appreciate you moving into this realm because I, I mean, certainly it's an uh, issue extremely close to my heart um, around, you know, how to be supportive of uh, my sisters in robes as well. And um, first of all, do we have you for another five minutes or 10 minutes? You can have me until nine o'clock, then my internet cuts out. So you have to <laughs> all right, great, thank so you. Another, another 15 minutes might, might work, actually. So, okay, yeah. um, well, just, uh, yeah, if if it does cut out quickly, uh, I just want to say how, how much we've appreciated this time, but we'll do a proper um, respect paying at the end if we don't get cut off. Um, <laughs> Tanajan, I'm curious if, you know, speaking on this, this point of, um, you know, you, you mentioned the Garu Dhammas and uh, the relationship between bhikkhus and bhikkhunis. Um, how have you seen this play out in terms of, um, you know, how the two genders live together? Um, you know, there's some who would uh, sort of espouse more of a, a very communal living situation others to kind of self-governing communities, but nearby. What have you seen to be the most harmonious um, or, or fruitful relationship between uh, communities of different gender? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think the way we have it here in Perth works very well. I, it's not the only way of doing it, but it's certainly one way. And that is we have about, there's a, the distance to the nuns monastery is, is over an hour over an hour away it's about one hour 20 minutes drive between the two monasteries there. and that seems to be a good distance sometimes we go there to give teachings for the beginning sometimes they come here to listen to the dhamma talks it's just kind of within driving distance a little bit long to drive just for a dhamma talk but still they, they come occasionally and i think that's that's good because it uh, creates you don't get too friendly i mean there's always a a danger there that if you get too friendly with women, whether they're bikinis or not, there's always a danger of uh, you know the, you lose your way a little bit, and uh, especially when someone is a bikini, because if there are bikinis, they will you know lay people they come and go more, but bikinis they're always there, and if you get friendly with them, you kind of build up that uh, friendship which can lead can lead people astray. So I think that the way we have it here is quite good. I think you can do it in other ways. I mean, there is a, another monastery here in Australia called Newbury Monastery, where Ajahn Ram is also uh, the um, kind of spiritual director, part of the Buddhist Society of Victoria. And there they have a large property and they have the bhikkhus in one end and the bhikkhun is at the other end of the property. Yeah. And uh, maybe that will work. Yeah. I, I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to see how kind of things happen in the future, but it might also work. Yeah. But I, I think that the, the, the model we have found here in Perth actually is a is a good one. The downside of the model we have here is that it's quite expensive yeah, because you need two different properties and you need to kind of all of that. So it needs more support in terms of, um, yeah, especially especially financial support to be able to, to, to do that. That's the kind of downside of it. Uh, um, but I do think it is useful to have some interaction. I do think it is uh, it is nice to be able to give the bhikkhunis support. Sometimes the bhikkhunis can give the monks support. They can give you some feedback. They can give you some ideas. So that mutual uh, mutual support, I think, is uh, very uh, very beneficial. So I think it is. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's something that we should be doing. So not too far apart, but I think is useful as well. Yeah. Thank you, Tana John. And if, if we can ask uh, one more, just uh, a question I'm very curious about. It's um, currently there's this, uh, you know, fad of psychedelic therapies. Um, and it's not just a fad, you know, there's real good research behind it now with John Hopkins and NYU, decreased fear of death, um, you know, a, a variety of benefits. How do we interact with that realm, you know, seeing as these therapies seem to be sort of problematic with the fifth precept. Hmm. <laughs> you asked for controversy, yeah. I'm giving yeah. it to you. <laughs> yeah, no, that, yeah, no, thanks, Thank, I like that, enjoy that. I, I really like to get some questions like that, actually. And uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's a tricky one, but I, you know, it, the way you are describing it, it is used largely like a medicine uh, uh, to kind of, to help you uh, med medicinally. Uh, I mean, uh, with alcohol, we shouldn't be doing it even as a medicine, but, um, I guess it depends. You really have to be careful. I mean, it. Yeah. 
I, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a harder one. I, I mean, I, I know a lot of people who started out with uh, psychedelics and became monks as a consequence of using psychedelics. That's a very common experience because they had a kind of different perception of the world and got them started on this path. So I, I'm not the kind of person who is going to condemn these things out of hand. I don't think that is the right approach either. But um, so I would say if you use it as a medicine and it can help you to overcome anxiety, for example, or depression and these kind of things, uh, I think used wisely, it is, uh, I, I wouldn't have any problem with it personally. Uh, but I think uh, in terms of spiritual practice, uh, I would say they have a limited, very limited um, potential. They can give you some initial kick in the right direction, but they will not be able to, if, if, it's, if you're really gonna have spiritual progress, it has to come from the inside. It has to come from your own drive, not from some kind of external substance. So I would not recommend it as a, as something to be used as a you know as a part of the spiritual path and that is where i think it goes maybe goes too far now Dunajan, um thank you so much for for taking the time to speak with us i know that uh you know our correspondence over the past year or so has been really um just a constant really uh, appreciated thread and uh you, you know your sort of guidance for our project as well um is something we'll welcome and value going forward is so thank you so much great very nice to meet you very nice to see you see you after this time because i, I have no idea what you look like now i know what you look like that's kind of, <laughs> kind of help, help, helpful you know so how what how how is your monastery is it only the two of you living together or or what is it like yeah that's a good question well our monastery is more of a, a monastery um so it's uh, I'm actually in a hut behind some lay supporters here in Seattle and go for alms every morning to Pike Place in Seattle and come back here and we're sort of seeing what will form. Um, Ajin Kovilo, what, what about you? What's your situation at the moment? I'm actually uh, in university during spring and fall parts of the year. It, uh, it's a Buddhist university near Abayagiri Monastery called City of 10,000 Buddhas. Dharma oh, yeah. realm Buddhist university. So I'm learning mm -hmm. Sanskrit and Indian classics, Buddhist classics, Chinese classics there. So I'm kind of going back and forth between here and up to Seattle. Um, so, but yeah, hopefully in the years to come, we'll get a piece of land and it'll start off with just myself and Tanisabo, but we're open yeah. to things growing. Great. That's marvelous. Yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that's really cool. So we, uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful life. I often think about the monastic life and uh, how fortunate it is to, you, you know, you end up as a monk some kind of randomly. It's very hard to really see how, that, how it happens. Uh, and then when you eventually get to this teaching, you start reading the word of the Buddha, you kind of think, wow, I've hit upon this treasure, you know, this kind of amazing thing. And there's nothing like it, you know, anyway, in the spiritual world. It's like, it's a really unique stuff what we have in Buddhism. Man. And uh, you feel like the luckiest person in the world to have kind of hit upon this stage things, you know. So I wish you both the very best of luck and uh, all, you know, hope your monasteries and everything goes really well then. So <laughs> you, Thank you, Tanajan. Do you have any yeah. piece of it, you know, any anything you'd, uh, other piece of wisdom you'd leave with us with as kind of young, young monks moving into this yeah. whole realm of, you know, <laughs> doing something on our own a bit? Yeah. Just uh, just uh, don't try to control things too much and go with the flow. If, if you try to control, it just gets painful and difficult. And, and uh, just, uh, you know, you're already doing so many of the right things, like uh, basing your practice on the suttas is exactly what I would, uh, would recommend. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have any teachers. You have teachers as well, but the gold standard becomes the suttas. And, and uh, for, don't never forget about the most important thing in the practice, which is the foundation of Buddhism. Go back to the basics again and again and again. I think this is where people go wrong. They forget that the basics, the kindness in daily life, how we treat each other, uh, the kind of the simple things actually is the most important part for making progress in, the, in one's practice. Uh, and uh, that is where meditation comes from. And meditation does not come from just sitting hours after hour, hours after hour. It comes from the qualities of heart that you bring to the meditation practice. Uh, and then you are going to be on the right track, I think. Yeah. Thank you, Tanisha. <laughs> yeah.